Hi, I'm Monique Samrani, and I am a senior exercise science major at the University of Mount Union. Hi, this is Brian Lazar, a sophomore exercise science major at the University of Mount Union. And our research study focuses on whether or not shoulder injury resistant swimmers have distinct flexibility patterns compared to recently injured swimmers on a division three college team. Now, why is this important? Well, the shoulder is the most commonly injured body part in swimming, accounting for up to 80% of all swimming related injuries. High intensity competitive swimmers usually practice six to seven times a week and typically compete 16,000 to 25,000 shoulder rotations a week. With collision athletic injuries on the rise, work and research need to be done to help prevent injuries and re-injury. Studies have examined whether shoulder pain and injury can be linked to a lack of shoulder flexibility. While the findings have been mixed, a number have found a significant relationship between decreased shoulder range of motion and the occurrence of a future injury. Shoulder range of motion is commonly used to assess injury risk. It is not known whether it can be used to distinguish the injury resistance or prior injury status of a swimmer. In addition, the shoulder rotator cuff plays a critical role in the mobility and stability in swimmers. To our knowledge, this will be the first study to examine the differences in shoulder range of motion and prior injury status in swimmers. This research study mimics a similar methodology to the one previously done by Dylan and his colleagues on runners that were already previously injured. Depending on the findings of our study, it may be used to decrease the incidence of shoulder re-injury among college level swimmers and inform injury prevention strategies. The purpose of our study was to examine the effect of shoulder injury status on values of shoulder range of motion. The three injury groups to be examined were injury resistant, that never suffered a shoulder injury, injured group that suffered an injury in the past six months, and re-injury resistant that suffered an injury over two years ago. It's hypothesized that those who are injury resistant may have an increased shoulder flexibility compared to those who were recently injured. If sample sizes allow, we'd like to also investigate if sex-specific or stroke-specific differences exist between these groups. So our methodology consists of um, Athletes from a Division Three swim team that were recruited from as subjects for this study. We took descriptive measures um, such as height, weight, and body fat, and we also will use a self-administered questionnaire to investigate shoulder injury history, uh, years of swimming experience, sex, and stroke specialty as shown in the figure on the bottom of the slide. The key component to this questionnaire is the status of injury. So then we could place these participants in the three different groups, which again are injury resistant, meaning they were not um, injured within the last two years. Those who are the injured group, which it means they were injured within the last six months. And those who are in re injury resistant mean that they had a shoulder injury within the last two years. Prior to preseason, shoulder flexibility will be assessed with the use of a goniometer. Shoulder movements being assessed include flexion, extension, abduction, horizontal abduction, horizontal adduction, internal and external rotations. Each of these um, movements were done both passively and actively, and every angle measure is recorded on both sides and through each type of motion. Limitation, limitations of this study include the use of a self-administered questionnaire to investigate past history and its cross-sectional nature. Um, due to not having access to past medical information, there is a need to rely on subjects we recall, which may affect the accuracy of our results, meaning um, how long ago they were injured versus when they were medically diagnosed as injured. Our expected results are that we hypothesize that those who are injury resistant, meaning those never injured um, at all or in the past two years will have increased shoulder range of motion. Here are our references. And finally, for our questions to you guys, how do you feel if we were to continue this study into future years and further look into the injured groups and their flexibility versus the non-injured groups flexibility? And then maybe follow up with a training program that could potentially help increase their shoulder range of motion. Also, are there any flaws in our methodology that you believe we need to address in order to improve our study? Finally, do you have any questions for us at all? Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our presentation and we hope that you have a great day.